Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. We're continuing our reading of these hadiths. Uh, we were dealing in chapter 4, Truthfulness, and I can definitely see why these are valuable to Islam because you come to understand way more and it helps you become more bonded. Alright, we were dealing with the commandary and we were learning the word Siddiq, which is voracious, and Khadhab, which is liar. And th clearly, the commentary reflects that it's an intense thing that we do not want. Uh, when it's going to be bad, you're going to be bad. But if we're truthful, he, he argues, we're entitled to a reward. Whereas if you're a sophist, you'll get retribution for it thereof, right? So let's continue. This hadith provides incentive for truthfulness because it is a source of every good deed and contains a warning against lying as it gives rise to all kinds of mischief. Yeah, I mean, one wrong lie. I once had someone lie to me, and they told me a bad lie, and it got me really angry, and I said something hurtful to someone, and it was based off of the lie someone had told me, and, oh, it was the worst feeling, is when you've said something to someone that they didn't deserve because someone told you they said something that wasn't true. It was horrible, you know? Until this day, I won't trust that person again. But next time someone tells me something. But I had trusted this person. And uh, it's hard when someone who you thought you could trust tells you something. And then you find out they're a habitual drama queen. And then you're like, oh, I should have known. So we got to watch out, right? 55. Hassan bin Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I remember these words. From Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. Give up what is doubtful to you. Hold on. Give up what is doubtful to you, for that which is not doubtful, for truth is peace of mind and falsehood is doubt. Hey, I'll do it. okay. It's like Rene de. Now hold on though. This is something interesting because that the French philosopher Rene Descartes would say, you know, doubt everything so that you let go and that you can have more sense of what is real and what is not this is very interesting when it comes to the topic of doubt but i know it means that if you think something is haram that you should say no let it go rather than you know halalize it right okay i'm learning fan i'm learning okay commentary this hadith leads us to the conclusion that one must always avoid doubtful things so that he does not do anything unlawful okay yeah this means it repeated in another hadith which says that he who has saved himself from doubts has in fact saved his faith and honor. Okay, saving yourself from doubts, having faith and honor. Okay, that'll lead to it. Abu Sufyan, may Allah be pleased with him, reported in course of his detailed narration about Heraclius, Heraclius, when the latter questioned him about the teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that he told us Worship Allah alone and do not associate a thing with him and give up all that your ancestors said. He also commands us to perform Salah prayers, to speak the truth, to observe modesty and to strengthen ties of kinship, Al-Bukhari and Muslim. I saw that in the, the movie The Message, right? That's what they say in the movie. Commentary. In this hadith, an enemy of the Prophet, peace be upon him, acknowledges the veracity of the Prophet's teaching. Because Abu Sufyan, may Allah be pleased with him, made his admission when he was a pagan. This hadith is mentioned in detail in Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I remember that scene. Yes. Abu Sufyan was with the Quraysh and he changed. Okay. Yes. Okay, now we're in 57. Abu Thabi from Sahil bin Hunayf. May Allah be pleased with him, said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He who asks Allah for martyrdom, Allah will raise him to the highest status of martyrs, even if he dies on his bed. Hey, notice that. So it's not just about the battlefield. You can have a wound or some other cause or ailment that leads you to be lying in your bed. That's interesting. Okay. Commentary. This hadith highlights the merit and importance of sincere intention. 
which is in fact is so great that by virtue of it Allah raises a person's status to that of a martyr. Okay, sincere intention, raising your status in the eyes of Allah, we are very well aware of that. On the contrary, persons of foul intention will be consigned to hell by Allah, even if they die in the struggle. Okay, look at that. Look at that. So it's not a guaranteed. It's all about intention. So Hamza Yusuf's book has made that clear. The Quran makes him clear. All of it's coming clear. And now we just have more hadiths to make it even more clear. Abu Harar, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, One of the earlier prophets who was out on an expedition proclaimed among his people that no man should follow him who had married a woman with whom he wished to cohabit, but had not yet done so, or who had built houses on which he had not yet put the roofs, or who had bought sheep or pregnant sheep camels and was expecting them to produce young. He then went on the expedition and approached the town at the time of the Asr prayer, or little before it. He then told the son that both it and he were under command, and prayed up to Allah to hold it back for them. So it was held back till Allah gave him victory. He collected the spoils, and it meaning fire, came to devour these, but did not. Wow, so he collected the spoils, so fire, devour these, but did not. Okay. He said that among the people there was a man who stole from the booty. He told them that a man from every tribe must swear allegiance to him. And when a man's hand stuck to his, he said, There is a thief among you, and every individual of your tribe must swear allegiance to me. Okay, his hand stuck to his. There's a thief. Ooh, okay. Let's see. In course of swearing of allegiance, hands of two or three persons stuck to his hand. He said, The thief is among you. They brought him a head of gold, like a cow's head. And when he laid it down, the fire came and devoured the spoils. Spoils were not allowed to anyone before us. Then Allah allowed spoils to us as he saw our weakness and incapacity and allowed them to us. Al-Bukhari Muslim. This is interesting. So their hands are sticking. It's like, you're the ones who stole something. But it's like, kind of shows you the human's desire for some type of reward for a name. We, we like our little trinkets. Yeah, there is a disposition to it, right? Commentary. In the opinion of Imam Asuyuti, the Prophet, peace be upon him, referred to in this hadith was Prophet Yusha bin Nun, Joshua. He conducts shows that it is necessary to make suitable arrangement for the worldly needs of those who are engaged in the cause of Allah. So that they can concentrate on their struggle without any distraction. Yeah, the spoils. I mean, that is something that has made... I mean, it makes sense. If you're going to do something, it's like you want something at the end of it. None of us like something that is not tangible in a certain degree, right? You want a sort of instant gratification in the material realm. So, it makes sense, right? The lawfulness of the booty of war fought in the way of Allah is a specialty of the Muslim Ummah. Before the advent of Islam, the Sharia of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the booty of war, which was free from dishonesty, used to be consumed by fire. Okay, so, so melting it in the fire, the Mayans, they had their shibalba, they had, uh, they would take their gold, Toss it into the water caves. You know the, what do they call those? Those deep. It's like a, it's like you look in a cave. There's water, and you have no idea how deep it is. And they used to chuck their gold in there, because they had to offer something, yeah, uh, to their. I know it's different religion. I'm just saying there's a similarity here, of, of treasure being taken away. Right? This is interesting. This hadith also confirms the miracle of the prophet Yusha, Joshua in which the movement of the sun was stopped until he had conquered the village. Interesting, eh? Prophet Yusha and the sun stopping until the conquering of a village. Hakim bin Hizam, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, 
both parties in a business transaction have right to annul it so long as they have not separated. Okay. So if you haven't already cut the deal, you... If you don't... All right. That makes... I mean, that's pretty standard, right? So don't annul it if if you've already made the deal and cut and signed, because that would be kind of rude. And if they tell the truth and make everything clear to each other, i.e. the seller and the buyer speak the truth, the seller with regard to what is purchased and the buyer with regard to the money, they will be blessed in their transaction. But if they conceal anything and lie, the blessing on their transaction will be eliminated. Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Okay, look at that. So, if you hide anything as a seller, you're gonna, that's not good. Or if you're selling anything with the money, like maybe counterfeit money or you did something or you you thought you act like you was going to pay and you weren't or you agreed to a certain amount okay that's interesting that reminds me a lot with cars you have to worry about that a lot with cars when you go to buy a car so many people sell you a lemon 